Let me pull that up. No, it's not for the show. Oh, it's starting right now. Hey, welcome to Country Squire Radio on tonight's Country Squire Radio, where tonight we're talking about. I'm sorry, guys. Can I get a, can I get a mulligan on that? Let's just. Let's just are we are we live? Yeah, we're live. Doggone it! I know I messed that one up. <laughs> I messed it up. That's all on me. Well, it's like man, you know, we we had our chi going, then you just kind of you jumped the gun. Our chi? Well, you know that thing where we can kind of get in our rhythm or whatever. Tonight on Country Squire Radio, we're talking about curing tobaccos. Fire curing. Fire curing. Ow! Curing with fire. Also, we've got a pipe question of the week about getting the smell out of your clothes. Uh, this is coming specifically from someone's spouse. It's a very fun one. Can't wait to share that with you, along with quick fire questions, listener feedback, and more happening right now on Country Squire Radio. Welcome to Country Squire Radio. I'm Bo. And I'm John David. JD! Hey, Bo. Good evening, dude. Good evening to you, sir. How are you doing tonight? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great, man. It's been a been a crazy time around here, but a really exciting time. Just a really fun season, you know. Kind of uh, enjoying our uh, enjoying our shop and enjoying the history of it, but kind of celebrating also the the things to come and uh, and all the future here at, at the Country Squire, which we're fired up about. So uh, yeah, man, things are things are good. That's good, man. Yeah, That's things good. are things are really good. I'd say we yeah. we started off the show. You uh, you asked if I if I'd like a, a beverage. You gave me a choice between uh, gin and whiskey. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go the full John David route. And, yeah, uh, yeah. You, you you went you went gin tonight. Went gin, and I got to tell you, you were about the only person I know who can make gin taste drinkable. Like it <laughs> is, this is this is quite good. Well, it, I, I'm glad you at least acknowledged the fact that you are drinking gin because I, we we did have a laugh. You know, I I ran out of the little cocktail cups, the little clear cups we have here at the Squire uh-huh. uh, that we normally drink uh, liquor out of, and, and and it was convenient because you could have hidden the fact tonight that you were drinking uh, clear liquor. So, uh, but but you you're, you joined the company of. Uh, me and all the other seventy-five uh, year old women <laughs> that that love Red Book uh, and and and, uh, and 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 British aristocracy, and now are are drinking uh, are drinking gin and tonic. Look, so so that, that's great. Let's I, be honest, I, I'm thankful for that. It would have come out that it was clear once I knock it over, which will inevitably happen right. <laughs> during the recording. Uh, man, you know, before we actually uh, uh, get started, I mean, like, I feel like we need to kind of address something. We have started uh, something of uh, a lot of discontent and loyal. Uh, what have we done now? Usually loving uh, Country Squire Radio listener community. What uh, I didn't realize we'd mess mess with people. What we, what what happened? Well, you know, on this program, and if you're new to this program, welcome. Uh, we have a section called Quick Fire Questions. This is generally uh, something that uh, it's a lot of fun. We kind of get a, it gives you a chance to kind of get to know me and John David outside of the traditional realms in which we speak, uh, and it, it you know can be a, a good you know time to explore. Uh, preferences of various things now not since uh I, in fact i would i would argue that that i don't think there's been a moment in the history of this podcast that a more uh, con, uh, uh contempt issue a more uh, div- divisive issue had, had come up i'm kind of I, I don't know where this is going i'm kind of terrified queso versus guac oh really yeah is that a, that's a thing huh? well, yeah as you recall you you were you were quite um uh you, you felt oh, very confident no, i was i was adamant yeah about I, your the queso contingency that was out there however right. my guac peeps uh they spoke up man and and in fact that like we even had to put a little uh voting thing on twitter it was pretty even matched in terms of those two uh um uh, wow c- c- condiments is, would, would that be considered yeah a, sure a dipping, yeah uh, yeah solutions? well no, 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 yeah i mean it's a it's a dip it's a uh, an appetizer i uh, don't think this this is see, I, been... this is where i feel like there should be a both and thing right you know oh, it, no, no, it's, no, no, it, that it's, kills the entire segment no it, it does <laughs> you, you're right but it you know it's like uh i i don't know i mean can, can we can we both just agree that they're both great but but oh, yeah. that queso is better. I, I don't think that's uh, that that's that's up for debate at all. I think, <laughs> I think most people are uh, all, all about all about it both. But anyway, I just I wanted to give a shout out because it was oh, really good. interesting. That's good to yeah. see the tweets that followed after uh, last week's live show. Just people like you know queso guac queso guac. I was like, really? Okay. I don't think we've had this much uh, back and forth since uh, on, on a quick fire question since the <laughs> old uh, 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 cornbread and milk discussion from. <laughs> That's a deep cut, which, right which is interesting because uh, one of our um, the anti hurricane, our good friend. Oh yeah. Uh, he uh, he the other day was laughing. Uh, they had some leftover cornbread, and um, of course he was at the house and no one was around. I think it was late at night. He was like, "Didn't John David talk about putting that in milk?" 
And so I, it, it was great because he did, he did that. He loved it by the way, which, which every sane person will. And, and but it was funny cause he did it at nighttime when no one was watching just to not make a fool of himself. Oh, so that was, it was good. Cornbread milk uh, endorsed by at least half of, of country squire. Radio. No, I tried it. It was, it was quite good. How, how are things here at the country squire, man? Man. Great. Uh, like I said, you know, crazy busy, just getting ready for, um, for our big move. Uh, next door and uh man things are good we've got a uh, father's day sale going on right yes, now sir. uh all the pipes are 15 percent off uh hand blended tobaccos are 10 percent off and all cigars are 10 percent off also so uh we just um just the other day is pretty cool uh got this really significant collection of estate pipes in and so it's uh it, the it's a collection of, it was it was 40 pipes that came in um, and you know, for a shop our size, that's a, that's a good amount of pipes, uh, you know, to walk in the door, but, um, it, it probably included, um, I, you know, I think the least expensive pipe in the batch was probably a Stanwell with bamboo on it. Like it, mm. like, I mean, it, there were probably seven Savinelli autographs, uh, several, uh, discontinued Savinelli lines, a couple of Italian handmaids, a Costello. I've got a couple right here just to show folks. This oh, is a, nice. uh, okay. an Il, Il Cepo, a beautiful poker there. We've got. Um, we have four Beckers in the contingent. These are all Beckers that date from the 80s, uh, which is really, really nice. Some two clubs, three clubs, and four clubs. Um, and uh, Savinelli Gold, which I didn't even know was a thing, but apparently <laughs> Savinelli uh, had a gold-banded pipe. Yeah, I was about which, to say, why would they uh, call it gold? Yeah, uh, maybe because it's got gold on it's it. Yeah. Bling uh, it's beautiful. So we got a, got a few of those. And then, of course, uh, uh, the, the granddaddy here. Um, one of uh one of the Savinelli autographs. This is a grade five. There's several grade fives and a, a couple of grade fours. But um anyway, real real cool collection. And those are of course included in the sale too. So that's uh that's going on. And uh you know take advantage of that. That'll be uh, through the rest of this week. Ends on Father's Day. Um and then uh also uh some news of course uh you know the Dallas Pipe Show uh, Texas Pipe yeah. Show which is coming up in October. Uh they've uh they contact me. We've agreed to do a um a blending class at the Texas Pipe Show on uh, the Friday night before the show. And so, yeah. uh, pretty cool. Yeah, so so I'll be leading that. It'll be a lot of fun. And uh, we'll have folks, obviously, just like last year, come from all over the country to to Fort Worth there at uh, Pop Safari Room. And, uh, and we'll be blending up a storm, just going through all the different ingredients of uh, you know, what makes a pipe tobacco blend, uh, what it is and, and give you the chance to, to blend too. So, uh, pretty cool. Yeah. I hope, uh, hope y'all can come and, and you can get caught blending just like me. I was about to say, like, yeah. it's great, man. So guys are coming from all around the country to get in the room and just blend and right just there blend, man, like just, just be, all blending together. And you could, yeah. you could catch them blending all at the same time. If, that's, if, if that's something you want to, that's, that's exactly right. Are y'all going to, are you going to videotape it? We're not, you know, <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, I mean, that's fine. That's fine. We're, we're, we're not, it you might know? be inappropriate. All things considered. you got new blenders coming in. They don't know what they're doing. You don't want to necessarily put them on the spot. <laughs> I am, but I am curious. Like, <laughs> I am curious if, uh, are, like, when when you do a blending class. I mean, is it kind of like an eat your own dog food type of situation? Kind of, uh, well, you know, you, you can kind of. Um, it's one of those things where you get to try other people's blends, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then you know the the whole. The whole goal, uh, you're the one that started no, this. You're the one that's and, and, then, and then the whole goal, you know, towards the end of the time, you know, we'll find out. We may do a competition where, you know, who's got the best blend or yep. who's who's uh, who, who did the, who did the best job or or whatever. But anyway, it'll be fun. The folks from STG Lane will be there, good friends of uh, of the podcast, and so they'll be providing all the uh, all the oh, raw awesome. ingredients, which is which is really great. Oh, and yeah. uh, so we'll we'll have a lot of fun with Man, that. Y'all be so, fully stocked. That's um, awesome. So that that is on uh, the first weekend of october and if you'll give me a second because i always forget it is uh that will be on the 5th of october and then of course the 6th of october is the main uh show date and so that you can find that at their new website they just relaunched their website uh, again today uh for the texas pipe show so anyway pretty pretty cool we're excited about that not surprising man you got Pi lawrence out there you know he is always making sure that everybody looks good online so uh not not surprised actually i think i saw him post out earlier a bit of an updated uh look to their logo for this year if i'm not mistaken i think so yeah. yeah i think that's i think that's right looks really good um pretty cool also uh too we you know we had a bunch of esoterica come through the shop um here a couple of weeks ago and and i just want to say for the first time publicly this was the first time i feel like we handled it like <laughs> like responsible adult humans uh-huh L- like like it did we we invested in our website mm. it didn't get shut down all the mail orders were were filled we think appropriately and responsibly. And I did not have anyone call curse me out and then hang up the phone. 
like on previous uh, times. Esoterica smokers are, are are really intense. If you didn't know that, so um, <laughs> yeah. so, so anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it was great. Yeah, it, it was pretty cool. So uh, you know, we don't have any more right now. It's all gone, obviously. But uh, but uh, that was uh, that was kind of. I, I felt good. You know, I felt good about that. Could you it's, imagine? I was just thinking about like the demand of Esoterica tobaccos when they come out. Could you imagine if all of a sudden, like, oh, we found a loose crate of Frog Morton. You know, like, like what that would do. Yeah, people would have like you know aneurysms and stuff. I mean, it'd just be it'd be out of control. It'd be dangerous. Yeah, like I don't know if you can like actually like you know Black Friday style rush a website, but that would be no, you can the situation. Yeah. <laughs> like, like what's this? It's it's a hacking attack. No, no, they just found some frog. It's frog Morton, <laughs> right? <laughs> Man, well, good stuff, man. That's awesome. Uh, that, it's always uh, always great to see. Uh, you know, the, the 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 interest and the demand is high uh, for for esoterica. Yeah, con continuing on yeah, their long tradition. Continuing on, uh, you know, just trying to uh, make the make the best of it. It's uh, it's solid gold. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, <laughs> we're gonna be talking about something that is solid gold in its own right, because with gold, you you find you refine it by putting it in a fire and that's a weird transition to say we're talking about fire curing tobaccos this week which has a lot to do with gold obviously um and and by obviously i mean none at all uh yeah so we, yeah we just, I thought we'd talk about uh fire curing tobacco it's one of those nerd topics that uh you know real uh tobacco enthusiasts will will be interested in and enjoy and uh may already have been boned up on but it'd be a nice uh, refresher we've talked about different fire uh cured leaf before obviously um you know, things like Latakia and uh, Kentucky Dark Fired Burley. Um, but we just thought we'd talk about, you know, kind of zoom in on the on the fire curing process, what that means. Um, and, and kind of from an overall standpoint, the 30,000 foot view, I like to say this, uh, what is curing uh, to begin with? You know, uh, we would talk about curing. It's like, well, it wasn't sick. Why are you curing it? And, uh, oh. and, and, and so the tobacco is uh, <laughs> is uh, has to go through this process. So fi fire curing tobacco um Curing is a uh, and and by the way, I'm going to feel a little self conscious tonight because our dear friend Brian Levine is is apparently watching tonight. Yeah, no, and he get this wrong. He has forgotten more about curing than <laughs> I'll ever know. Like he he's that guy, and so I'll probably get a laundry list of things that I messed up tonight. But I'm okay with that because I, I, as a, as a tobacconist, I want to learn, and and so you know we're we're this baby stuff. We'll, right? we'll be retweeting Brian during the live show. No, no, that's, 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 that's good. Yeah, that's that's good. So ho hopefully I'll get a, a, a passing grade. Brian we'll, we'll Levine, see. of course, the Vice Magazine <laughs> podcast. A good good friend of the show and a dear friend dear friend of mine. So um so if, if curing the the curing process, you know what what is that when tobacco is. Uh, harvested, you know, it, it, you're thinking about a green plant, right? It's just like anything. It's a green, real leafy. It's got this gummy uh, texture to it. It's a it's a flowering plant, you Wait, know, whoa, real beautiful. Whoa, whoa. Green, flowery, like you mean it doesn't come out of the ground brown shriveled and, and cut into very very specific strips there there are parts of the world where little elves do that but but <laughs> but i you know that those are parts of the world where the fountain of youth and uh machu picchu all those things that have been hidden for centuries that they're all located there right, but but right. for us normies we have to deal with <laughs> the tobacco when it's when it's grown it's it's green um and, and so you know the the tobacco is obviously uh harvested in its raw state you know the leaf is just too green and um and too sappy to be uh, consumed, it, it is not able to be uh, to be lit and and basically combustible, uh, you know, right in its raw state, and so um, and so it can't be smoked. Uh, there's uh, a lot of chlorophyll content, obviously. If you go back to your uh, biology class, yeah, the, uh, that stuffs that uh, you know gives the uh, plant its green look and uh, helps it, uh, you know, photosynthesize light and all that stuff. You've got uh, that there, and it's going to give it kind of a kind of a raw uh, grassy or not even grassy, like a raw, sappy taste. You know, there's just a, um, it's just not a pleasant, it's not a pleasant taste. And so um, the chlorophyll has to be reduced. And then also the tobacco simply just has to be dried out. And so that we, we have the curing processes to, to accomplish that. Um, and, uh, and, and, and so that's kind of where that comes from. So there's, di there's different types of curing. Uh, we're going to nerd out a little bit. I'm trying not to get too, too deep in this. Cause you know, we don't want people to fall asleep. Wait a second. Wait a second. Yeah. Slow, yeah. Wait, right, wait, right. bring, bring me in slow. Right. So, uh, different types of curing. We talk about, uh, you know, air curing of, of tobacco, which is, uh, you know, simply what it is. It's, uh, it's, it's curing by just kind of, kind of hanging out literally. Um, you, you've got fire curing, which we're talking about tonight, flu curing, uh, which is, uh, tobacco, um, is introduced to indirect heat with flu curing, whereas fire curing, it's a direct heat and direct smoke. We'll talk about, you know, that tonight. Um, and then, of course, there's sun curing, which is, uh, you know, uh, laying out in the field. I mean, you know, this is where you've got your, you know, the the direct uh, light 
uh, you know, uh, the, the the light is interacting directly with with the with Old the plant. Yeah. yeah. So um, so fire curing is direct contact um, of heat and smoke uh, with the with the tobacco plant. And so, you know, you think about, OK, what are we what are we doing here? We're literally taking, uh, in some cases, whole plants, hanging them upside down in barns and then uh, and then introducing a fire underneath it. Now, now, OK, so you think about what happens there. So you've got the heat, obviously, that's produced from fire. Um, but then you also have these smoke particles. Right. I mean, you've ever seen a campfire at nighttime or, you know, a campfire or a fireplace or anything else, there's these uh, plumes of, of smoke that come up. Well, that smoke is not just air or nothing. It's, it's something. Those are smoke particles that are, that are emitting from that fire, right? And so uh, those smoke particles, they are uh, attaching themselves to the leaves of the tobacco hmm. as the fire is, is roaring, right? That's kind of, uh, that's part of the process. So, you know, I, when I think about like, I guess, air cured about how the leaves like, like literally hang like down lengthways, when it's fire curing, are they also hung down that way? Or are they more like flat to catch more of the? Yeah, they're generally they're generally hung in a similar way. I guess right? that makes and sense. So, more more yeah. tobacco for. Well, yeah, and they can get they can get more in the you know the the uh, the firing barn basically, which mm. is kind of the traditional way to do this. So, um, but yeah, so it's so it's hanging, um, and uh, you know you've got a these fires that of course are burning at the bottom of your um, uh, of your of your you know curing barn or whatever um it, the, it's it's a fire that you want to introduce at a kind of a um a kind of a slow build up to a uh you know a smoldering fire not necessarily a roaring fire um you know something that's gonna uh just uh you know cook the tobacco at a lower temperature it's it's almost like you know when you uh have you've got these people that are like oh you're supposed to fry an egg like you know really hot heat mm -hmm. and real fast mm -hmm. and then you've got these folks who, no you're supposed to you're supposed to cook it real slow and kind of let it build up and then you know let it simmer and it well th this is going to be kind of in that camp right you know you've got the um the idea of letting these fires underneath the leaves build up kind of slowly um and and, and typically uh, you'll want it to to top out at kind of a low heat, uh, and then just stay there for a while. And so that's a uh, that's part of it. The slow burn uh, it exposes the tobacco to heat uh, and the smoke burning. And so that you know that smoke uh, we talk about the particles from the the uh, the uh, the smoke. That's where a lot of your flavor is coming from uh, in the process. And so um, one of the obviously the most uh, you know, well-known, famous uh, leaves that are fire cured is one of our, you know, our friend Latakia, uh, which is which is fire cured, and it's um, it, it, what makes Latakia so interesting. We've mentioned this before, are the hardwoods that they burn underneath the leaves, mm -hmm. because the the wood itself is so aromatic, and so as it's imparting those leaves with its uh, with its particles, it's it's. Uh, it's it's bringing that flavor into the leaf, which is really interesting. So uh, Cyprian Latakia, for instance, you've got the uh, the mastic shrub, uh, myrtle, um, and and some other indigenous uh, you know leaves and shrubs that are there. Uh, and occasionally they'll use some softwoods too, just depending on what's available, which I, I think is interesting. But um, but the the mastic plant, it, you know that it, it that they're burning underneath this uh, you know this leaf. Uh, it, it's actually, you know, it's been harvested for a spice, uh, as a spice for, you know, literally millennia uh, in that part of the world. So, you know, Turkey, Greece, uh, Cyprus, uh, you know, it's a, it, it's a, it's something that they've used just kind of as a, uh, an expensive spice. It's also been used, uh, believe it or not, as a chewing gum. Uh, the sap for the sap, the mastic from this stuff. It's a, it's like a sappy. Uh, resin-like uh, substance when it when it cools down. And when you say spice, I mean you mean like a cooking spice? Yeah, that's right. Oh wow. Yeah, that's right. So and they'll use it in a bunch of different things. Uh, you know, it, it's um uh, common in that part of the world in things like puddings and uh, desserts. Uh, oddly enough, a uh, Turkish delight, uh, oh, which yeah. is kind of interesting, actually uses uh, uses the mastic, um, uh, you know, material uh, that that resin that kind of comes out of the plant, mm. uh, which is kind of interesting. So all these things that they're burning underneath these. Uh, these leaves, you know, you're, that's where the, uh, the, the flavor is coming from that. And then of course, from the natural plant itself. Um, and so most of the, you know, the, there is a, there is a, um, a kind of a, um, kind of a, uh, you know, misunderstanding, I guess, that the, that the nicotine level uh, is adjusted by the fire curing. And, and, you know, that might be the case in some way, although it seems like from what I've read, I, I'd be interested in Brian's, uh, 
uh, you know, take on this from what I've read and the research that, that I've, you know, been introduced to, um, the, the, the nicotine level uh, on leaves actually comes from just the leaf itself. It's, it's not really dramatically altered by the fire curing process. And so, you know, if you've got a, uh, you know, a, a Latakia leaf, um, then the Latakia leaf, you know, it's very low nicotine. It's very smooth and uh, burns real cool. And so that that really is not the, the nicotine content is not really changed by the fire curing process. Now, um, with with dark fired Kentucky Burley, for instance, um, you know, that's a leaf that has a lot more uh, natural nicotine content. And so um, what does change with the fire curing process, obviously, though, is the flavor. Right. Mm. So, you know, that's where you kind of confuse the. Um, that you want to confuse flavor with strength, right? Those are two different things. And so, uh, you know, a lot of in, in the cigar world, some of your strongest tasting cigars are going to be Maduro cigars. But then, you know, at the same time, those cigars in some cases are the lowest nicotine, um, uh, coolest burning and, and sweeter cigars. And so, you know, even you think about uh, coffee, you've got coffee that uh, has a real robust, bold flavor uh, to it. But a lot of times those coffees, aren't necessarily the most caffeinated. They're the most, uh, you know, it has a bold flavor, but uh, they're not particularly caffeinated. Uh, and, and so with tobacco, it's, it's similar in some sense. You've got, um, you know, we, we, we want to confuse the bold, rich flavor of something like Latakia with nicotine, but that's not always the case. Of course, with, with Kentucky dark fired, you know, uh, Burley and, and things of that nature, it is going to be more uh, correlated, but it's just by, just by chance really, as far as I'm, as far as I know. So, um, so anyway, um, you know, you kind of build up that uh, slow flame around this tobacco. And uh, really, you know, when you're fire curing something, you only want it to be, uh, they say kind of the the max temperature there is about 130 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So you're not even really cooking it that, uh, that hot, but it's something that, you know, it's going to go, um, it's going to be, you know, exposed to that, that fire for so long that eventually it'll just kind of bake out that, uh, the greenness and the chlorophyll, the, the plants are hung in these barns to kind of yellow out, you know, you've seen the, you know, any kind of leaf will yellow over time. And so, um, and, and eventually it just kind of, you know, it has a nice brown color to it. It, it goes into that, uh, you get the color you want, uh, and crunch. then the, the crunchiness, right. And then it being exposed to the heat, um, you know, you're getting that, um, you just kind of nice toasted, uh, toasted look to it. So happens about four to six weeks. Um, and, and, you know, nonstop, uh, not nonstop in, in most cases, although sometimes, you know, they'll introduce, uh, different, uh, almost, uh, ramping up and then slowing down to the fire, you know, they'll, they'll do, they'll do a fire like four or five times, um, you know, things like that. And so it's just, but, it, but again, it's a slow smolder. It's not a roaring fire. That's going to sure. actually burn the leaf or scorch the leaf. Um, I mean, so maybe, maybe this is kind of like more the romantic in my mind, but I mean, I'm thinking very specifically of like, you know, just like tending to this smoldering fire for weeks on end. But I mean, like, is this more, more done and more of like an industrial complex as opposed to like, like on, on the farm, so to speak? Um, yeah, it, it, most of this stuff is actually done on, the, on the farm. It is. Yeah. And so you've got, uh, you know, the, the old fashioned process obviously is the, the curing barn, mm. right? The old, uh, wooden barn. If you're driving through, uh, Virginia, Kentucky, North That's Carolina, just... you'll see these barns. And huh. a lot of times, you know, people have even, uh, told stories about seeing these barns that appear to be on fire. Right. And so they'll uh, they'll they'll stop their car and they'll run up to the house that's closest <laughs> to the barn. They'll be like, your barn's on fire. And they're like, I, I, I know I'm curing tobacco. Like, <laughs> And so, uh, you know, but but also they've got, uh, you know, more modern ways with these uh, kind of metal boxes and uh, the giant ovens, basically, that are being used to, to you know, uh, fire cure the, the tobacco. So kind of kind of interesting. You know, it's just a. Uh, um, uh, an old-fashioned way of curing uh, tobacco. It's really good for uh, chewing tobacco, snuff, snus, and and of course pipe tobacco. Uh, you know, you're not going to see it quite as much in uh, other tobacco products, cigars, um, uh, you know, cigarettes, things of that nature. Um, but you know, and 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 typically we'll see burley or oriental leaves like like a Latakia, uh involved in fire curing. Not as much Virginias uh, are fire cured. Um, and, and mostly I, I think that's due to just a natural sugar content. Uh, Virginia's don't react great to that. Although, uh, our companies like McClelland in the past have actually experimented with, uh, fire curing Virginia's, um, just to get something kind of different and unique. And, uh, I think if I'm, if I'm remembering right, those were in their Royal Cajun line, which they had three, uh, three different, uh, 
three different types there, but uh, and they're just kind of interesting and rich. But but generally, it's going to be Burley and uh, and Latakia that are that are fire cured. So um, anyway, just something kind of interesting, you know. It, all all tobacco has to be cured. There's a bunch of different ways, and of course, fire curing is uh, you know so uh, you know so you know. It's it's just interesting because it imparts so much you know particular flavor into the leaf um, that you just can't get any other way. Plus, it just it just seems so very primal. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just like you know mm, fire, right? You know, especially <laughs> as it kind of prepares the the tobacco for uh, you know the the fire of the bowl. You know, so I, I was actually kind of going into this uh, educational experience kind of nervous because I was concerned, like in my, like I said, in my head, I've got kind of this romantic idea of, you know, the tobacco being harvested it going to the barn it hanging down for, you know, weeks on end. Yeah, and, sure. But, you know, being kind of fire cured, everything else. And so I'm, I'm kind of glad to know that that's still like, that is actually the case because, you know, it's one of those deals where it could very well be, you go to like a warehouse somewhere and it's like gas fire or something of that. Well, nature. And, and, and what's interesting, of course, the, the market has changed. And so, um, the availability of raw, wood and and also it what's interesting enough when they fire cure these leaves uh, they're not just using wood to burn they're also using sawdust from that wood yeah. now sawdust over the years has changed itself this is a whole different you know rabbit you know trail we could follow <laughs> but saw, sawdust itself has changed because they don't necessarily uh, saw logs the way they used to and so uh, the the quality of the sawdust even is is different that they use to fire cure tobaccos and so with that you know even changing of the sawdust over uh this past several decades has changed how uh you know tobacco can be fire cured just wow. little things like wow. that the whole industry is not set up the way it used to be and um and, and so the materials you know they a lot of times these things have to be kind of rigged uh in order to to accomplish what they used to accomplish easily um, you know, say 50 years ago, but, oh. um, but anyway, just kind of interesting, you know, it's a, it's a old fashioned thing that still, uh, still happens. There are some more mechanized ways, you know, they've got these metal, uh, you know, grills, griddles that they're, um, out there doing it on. But, but in general, you know, we still see the old fire firing, uh, curing barn, uh, out there in the pasture and, uh, it's pretty cool. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Like you said, it's kind of primal, you know, it's like, no, we're going to fire this stuff and it's going to be smoky and then I'm going to burn it in my face and smell it and it's going to be delicious. <laughs> well, I mean, aside, <laughs> aside, aside from like any kind of casings, if like, let's say, let's say that, you know, I've got to like, I've, I've grown my own tobacco. I've, I've got a, a little yeah. barn and I, I, I do this. I, I fire cure it myself. Can I just like start like chopping it up right then and there, pack, pack in the bowl and it's good to go. Um, you could. I don't know if it'd be good to go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, I, I, my, my understanding, and actually th this is probably something I need to know more about, but I, I think after the fire curing process, it still needs to sit a while. I mm. think it still needs to kind of sit and breathe and um, and maybe even sweat a little more. I'm not, I'm not positive about that, but my sense is you wouldn't immediately uh, consume it at that point. Um, and, and of course, like so many products, you know, it's, you're going to introduce it into a blend, right? And so we'll, we'll take it, we'll process it like you do any other leaf. Uh, and then it'll be introduced into a blend. A lot of, uh, fire cured tobacco is so strong that you don't necessarily smoke it on itself. Right. So we think of Latakia, uh, we think of, uh, you know, Kentucky, uh, Burley, you know, these are blends that are, are leaves that are just really, really strong, real, uh, you know, hearty flavors and, uh, they're more ingredient kind of flavor leaves than they are, um, you know, something to be smoked by themselves. So you'd want to probably introduce something to it. Although there is the insane person that occasionally just wants to smoke a bowl full of, uh, you know, Kentucky and, um, uh, and, and they can have it. Yeah. Uh, and, and if they do that at our shop, I'm glad we're close to three hospitals. So that's, that's good. <laughs> well, amazing. All right. So well, kind of fun. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So you mentioned you, uh, just to kind of like, uh, again, kind of put it where it is. So, so you got the fire curing, you got the air curing, and there was one of the admissions. Well, of course, air curing, flu curing, flu curing. Uh, right, which is indirect heat and right. no no smoke, and then of course sun sun drying or sun sun curing. So, oh man, yeah. So nice little dive into the world yeah, of fire curing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, kind of neat. You know, you've got a, a a lot of different leaves out there, different ways we process them to get them ready for uh, your enjoyment, and uh, that's just a, a little piece of it. If you could kind of throw out maybe two or three blends that are like really good, like showcasing fire cured tobaccos. Well. You know, yeah, of course, we talk about, uh, you know, the the most obvious one probably as far as Kentucky tobacco is the dark fired, mm -hmm. old dark fired from Mac Baron. It's got uh, just a real hearty, uh, you know, aged uh, 
you know, Leaf in there that's got, you know, big exposure to that. Um, you know, our friend GL Peace has several tobaccos that that have uh, dark fired uh, burley in them. Um, gosh, what else is out there? Uh, you know, uh, Royal Yacht from Dunhill. I mean, th there's a whole a whole slew of these things that have the Kentucky. And of course, any any tobacco that's got Latakia in it, uh, you know, that has a fire cured element there. Um, you know, it, think of your favorite English blend, you know, your, your nightcap or your, uh, you know, um, the frog Morton or any of those, they're, they're all, all going to have that element there. Yeah. Well, you know, the great thing is, is if you're, if you've got kind of some Latakia blended into whatever your tobacco is, if you're going to really be able to get that taste, get that flavor profile, you're going to want to get it from a really good, clean smoke. That's right. Of course, I'm talking about the great kind of good, clean smoke you can get from a Missouri Meerschaum pipe. That's right. That's right. Of course, yeah. uh, man, we love the folks at Missouri Meerschaum. They make an <laughs> excellent pipe. And uh, t tonight's episode is actually sponsored by the MacArthur pipe, oh, bam! Uh, which is uh, it doubles as a golf club and a self-defense weapon. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is a this like is a pipe Thor was wielding this, you know, the, the, the Avengers. The MacArthur pipe is a pipe. You know, if you wanted to smoke Latakia straight or Kentucky Burley straight, um, you know, it, th this is probably not the pipe you want to do it out of because the bowl uh, is is probably, you know, it, it could probably hold close to an ounce of, of either of those tobaccos, right? And so you don't want to, you probably don't want to do that. This is good for your favorite blend, something you're going to smoke for uh, a long period of time. It's a good porch sitting, uh, dog petting, whiskey drinking pipe, you know, you're going yeah. to be hanging out yeah. and, and smoking your favorite blend after dinner, you know, <laughs> spending a couple hours and uh, the MacArthur pipe from Missouri Meerschaum, it's uh, it's the perfect pipe for that. So, uh, you know, big, generous chamber, uh, virtually an entire cob, uh, which is uh, bored out uh, over halfway down. And uh, of course, the fun long stem that's made of the uh, light wood and then of course the black mouthpiece that you that you know and love from Missouri Meerschaum so a great pipe it's going to cool that smoke down because it's almost got the church warden style shape to it and uh and and something that obviously you know when you're when you're smoking a pipe you're making a statement if you're smoking a MacArthur from Missouri Meerschaum you're really making That's a statement exactly right. so so own it smoke it uh live up to it and uh and 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 send us a photo of you doing it. I was about to say, man, like <laughs> I, I'm going to put it out a challenge. If you consider yourself someone who collects pipes and you don't have a MacArthur pipe, you don't, you're not a, you're not a pipe collector. No, I, I, I know. Like, right. That's just, that's just like, this is such an iconic pipe. So if you've got one, smoke it. Like John David said this week, take a picture of it, tweet it into us. We love retweeting those out. It's a good way to let Missouri Meerschaum know that you appreciate them for sponsoring this show. All right, man. Pipe question of the week. This is kind of a unique one. Uh, <laughs> And that it comes in the form of, I don't know if this is a haiku yeah. or not. It's a poem. It, it, it's a poem. It's a poem. Okay. So the, so the, so the question is a poem. The, the okay, question good. is, oh, is it's fun. <laughs> this will be, yeah, it's be good. Please present your question in the form of a poem. All right, here we go. <clears throat> and I quote, I love my husband. He loves his pipe. I hate the smell. So I must wipe away the stench to find that I find foul. <laughs> Help me country squire. Help me now. And then in parentheses, my question is, how do I best get out the smell of pipe tobacco in my husband's overalls? And <laughs> this comes from Mrs. <laughs> Don't tell my husband I asked. <laughs> <laughs> Only on Country Squire Radio. Only on Country Squire Radio, right? So how, how, do, how do I get the smoke smell out of, out of Jim Bob's overall? Now, now, what's funny, and of course, my, and Jim Bob, we're not saying it's your wife that asked. That's no, just, no, you know, no, it's right. You know what, if that happens to be the case, but but it, it might be. It might be right now. Our first, we were talking about this before the show. Our first uh, thing was is that our good friend of the show, Two Combs, uh, you know, who regularly wears overalls, we're yeah, like, he, you know, he he just got engaged, but we're like, well, he's not married yet. Who who could be writing this, right? Oh, wow. And, and so, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. It's a uh, so we know it can't be two. When did two anyway. get engaged? Uh, it's been a few months. It, it took him a long time to find someone that you know oh, would uh, okay, would okay, would yeah, uh, yeah, would yeah. would have him. <laughs> Just said, like it took me a long time too. <laughs> they, they said a date. Yeah, they said a date. Uh, sometime in September, okay, I think. Right, yeah, right. yeah, that's good. So, um, yeah, so smoke, you know, clothing, um, you know, y y you're part of the club probably that uh, you know, makes your husband take off. Uh, their clothes as soon as they walk in the back door kind of thing. It's like, okay, you can come in the house, but you got to strip down first, right? <laughs> we, he we hear that occasionally. Um, so, yeah, it, it, honestly, a good washing uh, will do, you know, anything with just a regular uh, detergent. Uh, but 
um, you know, it, there are ways to mask it if you're still out and about and want to uh, try to cover up with something like a cologne or uh, people use Febreze regularly because Febreze actually, uh, you know, gets in and, and, you know, finds those smoke particles and neutralizes the, the aroma. Uh, so it's something, you know, you can do there. Uh, it, it generally, you know, as far as getting something, it, the, the smell out, um, you're gonna, you're just gonna have to wash your clothes. I mean, that, that's all you can do, right? <laughs> uh, that, that's, that's part of it. I know, um, you know, when, when I get home, it's just kind of everything I have, uh, smells like smoke, everything I own smells like smoke. And I'm glad I found someone that is okay with that. <laughs> but, uh, you, so know, far as you know, for, uh, as far as I know, right. We, yeah, <laughs> the, you know, it hasn't led to any counseling sessions yet, which is good. But, um, but anyway, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's just one of those things that you'll have to have to deal with. Some most people can get the smoke smell out in uh, in just a single wash. Um, sometimes, you know, if you wash it with a, other, a lot of other smoky uh, clothing, mm. it might take a couple of washes. So, you know, a small batch wash might might be better. Uh, you know, you, you may want you may want to do each pair of overalls in its own its own overall batch when, when you when you wash them out. Uh, but, uh, you know, generally that's uh, that's about all you can do. So, all right yeah well hope yeah. that helps you mrs don't tell my husband i asked uh yeah and if your wife asked that tell her that we answered the question although i would imagine she must listen to <laughs> um, but hey if you've got a pipe question of the week send it into a show at country squire radio.com again that is show at country squire radio.com dot com Quick fire questions. Ow! All right, man. Quick fire questions, of course, brought to us by the good folks at the Ten Society. Ooh, more about them in just a moment. Love those guys. Yeah. All right. This is actually uh, this was sent in by listener Jane. Okay. Uh, although I did slap one at the end that's based off of uh, something earlier that you said during this very show. Now, what what's interesting is we both our uh, our pipe question of the week and then our quick fire questions are both from females. Oh, I, I, I like Jane isn't always a female name. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to pretend that Jane is we're, a female. We're going to go with Jane as a and, female, and 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 we're going to say, <laughs> Jane, "Hey, that's not... <laughs> that's cool." That that, but uh, Jane can be a male name, really. Yeah, there was Jane from uh, Firefly, like that was a really a, yeah. He was, he was played by um oh the actor that played him. I, I can't remember his name. Either. Okay, well, anyway, I, we're going to pretend like tonight we have two female uh you know people interacting with our show, and that's exciting because normally we don't. I think his name is Baldwin, but he's not related to the Baldwins or something like that. Yeah, I, anyway. Okay. Hey, hey, learn, learn something every day. Twitter. Yeah. I, I guarantee somebody who's listening right no, that's now. That's great. Correct. That's great. Yeah. All right. Ready? Yep. Nutella or peanut butter? Peanut butter. Yeah. I don't T get it, Nutella. It, I love Nutella. Don't get me wrong, but eight times out of 10 peanut butter. Yeah. Like I, I you know, what would you put Nutella on? What do you put on a lot of, you can put on, you know, bread or crackers or why um, would you do that instead of peanut butter? It just has a different flavor. I mean, have you, you've had it, right? Yeah. Uh, it's kind We've of had it before. It's, it's kind of... chocolatey, but there's a there's a hazelnut flavor. It's a yeah. ha it's hazelnut. Okay. So it's really good, but it's just one of those things. Like it, to me, it takes a more uh, kind of peculiar um, time to you know to smoke that or to 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 eat that. You know, I, I generally am going to want peanut butter. All right. Yeah. Fair enough, fair I've enough. never smoked Nutella for, for the for the record. <laughs> Wait, have you right. have you smoked peanut butter? But that well, all right. It, you know, uh, next up, <laughs> pineapple on pizza. Yes or no. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. We yeah. are firmly in the pineapple camp here at Country yeah, Square Radio. I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, all right. A button down shirt or t shirt specifically for leisure? T shirt. For leisure? For yeah. Leisure. T shirt. Like yeah. Chilling. Yeah. No, I, you know, I come to work every day. I try to, you know, I mean, with this this old dusty pipe shop, I'm like, well, we got to doll it up a little bit. I put on my little button up shirt or a polo or something. But, you know, if I'm at home hanging out, yeah, I'm going to put on a t shirt. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I I don't tuck it in, you know, like like with with the button down shirt. But I, I do kind of like a button down shirt for like chill out time because I'm kind of the opposite. Typically at work, you know, I'll wear a t shirt. You, you so are that though. What do you call that? Tech casual? Is yeah, that what you call yeah, it? Tech, it, casual. it? tech casual. You know, you're. I mean, you're not going to show up to the Apple, you know, reveal of their next gadget in a in a button up, right? You're going to be wearing a mock turtleneck. I have been trying. <laughs> I have been trying. Not, not a mock turtleneck. I'm not going to go full stop. <laughs> but but I, I have uh, I have been trying to like lean in a little bit and be like, well, let's let's redefine what tech casual is for like you know, the Southern entrepreneur, like tech entrepreneur. And so I've been so trying to go the like the Southern tech no, I have. I've been entrepreneur, trying to go, like, this kind of, like, it's a, it, it's no, it's a, it's a, it's mock overalls, right? What? It's the, <laughs> <mock overalls. laughs> no. but, but it, but it's got a, it, with tech, tech casual mock, you know, you've got a pocket for your, uh, you know, for your Android. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's right. And it's built in Bluetooth, which right. is perfectly fine. <laughs> 
<laughs> pina colada or margarita? Ooh, margarita, but by hair. Yeah. I like both of them a lot. I do love a doggone margarita, though, with salt. On yeah, the rocks. Yeah. On the rocks with salt. Margarita's great. Had some great times with margaritas. Had some very bad times with tequila. I'm going to go with pina colada. Uh, and then pina coladas have tequila on them too. But anyway, go pina ahead. colada? No, they don't. They have rum. Do they not? Oh yeah. Okay. And if you make it right, they got a lot of rum. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. All right. And then finally, and this is the one that I added on here. Okay. Uh, because you mentioned about eggs and how people like their eggs cooked different ways. Yeah. All right. Are, so are you a skillet's got to be like flaming hot, or you want it to just kind of like you know come up with the heat? I don't know what the right phraseology is, but I'm a I'm a slow guy. I'm slow a guy. I'm a slow, slow egg burn. guy. I think, yeah, yeah. Not that I cook a lot of eggs because I don't. Because pretty much everything I do in the kitchen is a complete disaster. But right. I, yeah, I'm a I'm a slow I'm a slow cooker kind of guy. Even with bacon too, I find myself wanting to kind of build it up slowly, not get it like burned or anything. Just kind of have a real. I like chewier bacon, you know, something that's got. Oh, I like uh, it crispy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. You got an extra cook fire question in there. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I, 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 I prefer it done slow. But I find, especially with like two kids trying to get everybody ready in the morning, it ends up getting done like like hot. Like you turn on the heater, you get everything else done. Oh crap, the the heater's on. Crying a thing. All right, now the egg's burning. You know, like so. It, the way that I want it is often not the way that I get. Not it. the way that happens. Right? <laughs> exactly. No, exactly. Yeah, no, that's good. Wait, well, hey, those are great quick fire questions, Jane, the guy or the girl. Please let us know. Uh, and, uh, and hey, if you've got a quick fire questions, feel free to send those in. Of course, quick fire questions brought to us by the good folks at the 10 society. That's right. Now, John David. Yes. Of the Cole family. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you a fan of pipe tobacco? I, I, I am. I, I do like pipe tobacco, Bo. Do you, do you uh, perhaps like uh, just one type of pipe tobacco? Or? Well, no, I like trying new pipe tobacco. Oh, really? Well, right. the great thing about uh, trying new pipe tobaccos is that there's so many of them to try. But the hard thing is, it's like you got to kind of make an investment, Which right? ones are you going to pick? And that man, that's a lot of money, Bo. What am I supposed to do to solve this problem? Well, I'm glad you asked, Mr. John David of the Cole family. <laughs> <laughs> the Ten Society is there to help you out because, of course, the Ten Society offers up a great online subscription service where you get... Uh, a hand-selected pipe tobacco sent to your door every single month. Uh, a nice, good sample size to figure out what you like, what you don't like. And honestly, it's a great service that is well needed. I actually very recently was uh, perusing the old uh, our pipe tobacco forums, and somebody uh, yeah, even yeah. asked the question of like, you know, where, where's a good subscription service? And uh, and while it was already recommended that the Tin Society should be checked out, it's the best out there. Absolutely, I was I was quick to say I hear that if you use the code Squire, you get twenty percent off on your uh, uh, first month service. Isn't that something? Yeah. <laughs> to which there was great cheers and echoes of like, yeah, actually that's uh, that helps support the Country Squire Radio that's podcast. Good. That's it's a good. great, great, great podcast. You get, you get new tobaccos. You get to support these entrepreneurs that are have this awesome, uh, <laughs> awesome subscription service, and 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 you get to throw you know throw some love to uh your your fellow you know your favorite rednecks southern tech casual watch your southern right exactly. that one <laughs> <laughs> so uh you know check them out you got to it's called uh, tensociety.com is the place to do it use the code squire for 20 percent off on your first month service got some great tobaccos a missouri meerschaum pipe and a little something special that comes along in every single month bo box as well yeah, so yeah, you yeah. gotta check them out again that's tensociety.com use the code squire for 20 percent off on your first month's service Listen to feedback. All right, man. The first one comes. This is in. always a, one of my favorite parts of the show. You know, the, these these poor people they 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 love us so much. They you know commit an, an hour of their week each week to to uh, listen to this stuff. They put up with our punishment, and, and and then they are actually gracious enough to write in and say, you know what, y'all are y'all are okay. And they just I, I know they do this out of pity. I know they do this out of pity, but right. but it, it it does help me sleep at night. Yeah, and, and that's and that's great. Yeah, I mean, like they, you know, we we get far more, you know, we 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 tolerate you guys than please, please stop. Right? No, yeah. that's good. Yeah, that's right. No, yeah, we, we occasionally Th get those people have stop. stopped listening to us. So, yeah, right. <laughs> it's always the funny times when they don't. But that that's very rare. That's very. We've been very blessed in these uh, in these internet and Twitter and iTunes streets. Uh, all right, man. Uh, Rob Piper writes in from iTunes. He says, real fun to listen to. These guys are a lot of fun to listen to. Uh, plus, there's a lot of great information about the wonderful hobby of pipe smoking. Uh, greetings specifically from Missoula, Montana. That would be Missoula. Missoula, Montana. Missoula, Montana, man. I've heard it is beautiful up there, and I, I've never been. But um, you ever you ever watched the, what's the movie, uh, A River Runs Through It? No, but old, the, old movie with Brad Pitt from yeah, the 90s, man. It's so good. Yeah, but that's that's in that that country, yeah. I need to see that movie. It's like, good, man. It, it's a, it's a, it's one of the best movies from the nineties. So, so we've been doing, it's, it's great. We've been doing this show for like five years, somewhere in there. 
And uh, and and so as as longtime listeners know, I take a trip literally every single year to Grand Rapids to go fishing with yeah. my grandfather. Yeah, sure. And uh, we go fly fishing. And literally every year, my grandfather like references that that uh, movie. Not my grandfather, my my father in law. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. My father in law references that movie. It's like, oh, and he always asks me, "Have you ever seen this movie?" And I constantly tell him, like. I've not seen it, but I, I want to do it. so good. Dog on it. Yeah. Uh, next, next one comes in from uh, listener Jason Breeden. What did G Jason have to say? Jason says, um, I got to say, up until I started listening to the show, I said Meersham, the way Bo pronounces yeah. it on air. Meersham. That, I don't pronounce it like Mir you Mir do. Meersham. 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 Mir 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 like you that. say Meersham. 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 Mir Mir <laughs> Mir I said Meersham, <laughs> the way Bo pronounces it on air. That's the first way I heard it years ago, so it stuck. Uh, but my accent is more in line with JD. I'm so sorry, Jason. Um, so over the last few months, hearing him say it uh, every week has altered my pronunciation. And so Jason now says it more like me, which is uh, Meersham. But, you know, at, to each his own. Hey, it's correct yeah, for it's... someone who also shares in your particular brand of like uh, accent. Like I said, bl bless his heart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we should do? We should actually ask Phil. Like specifically at some point, if we ever got the wonderful opportunity to like visit the good folks at Missouri Meerschaum, which is going to happen. Oh, oh, is it? Oh, no. Oh, I mean, are we, are, we, are we announcing anything? No, we're oh, not. No, but we're but, not it, but no, it, we're not. But it, but, you know, that, it, that will happen. Oh, no, it's going to happen some point. That, that's that's an announcement kind of right. OK, let's roll <laughs> it. Let's roll it. Mike, cut that part out. Well, ask Phil when uh, if ever some well, sometime we're blessed to uh, to go to, to Missouri Meerschaum, we should uh, we should ask Phil. I'll be good on air. Yeah, get it, get it, get get the record straight. <laughs> and we should interview uh, 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 people that that work there. Like, hey, what, how do you say this company? <laughs> I'd say that's a good way to do it. Yeah, we might get some people fired over that though. Ooh. I don't know. Yeah, we yeah. gotta be careful. About that. <laughs> uh, and then finally, man, we got one in from uh, man, good friend of the show, Doug Owen. What did Doug have to say? Yeah, I mean, love hearing from Doug. He says, "Hi guys, uh, dating myself once again as a dinosaur of the business." Of course, Doug. Doug has been in the uh, premium tobacco industry for for quite a long time. Good friend of the show. Uh, so he says, dating myself as a dinosaur of the business, I remember going by the Freiburg and Trayer store in Burlington Arcade in London on my first trip to the city. Uh, by then, they had been acquired by Imperial Tobacco, uh, but the ambiance was still there. I bought a four-ounce tin of their brown flake as a souvenir and still have the empty tin. Um, that tin's probably worth something, Doug. <laughs> uh, their tobaccos were a flagship brand at the legendary Arthur Leonard shop in Portland, Oregon. Uh, Leonard's was famous for catering to the carriage trade in Portland uh, at one point in the 1950s. Uh, they sold more Dunhill pipes than any other independent on the West Coast. The Freiburg and Trier, uh, Trier uh, Flakes were smoked by almost every employee at every pipe shop in Portland uh, when I worked at the Tinderbox in the 70s and 80s. Uh, at one point, there were seven shops to choose from, but Leonard's was always the place to go for high-grade pipes and tobacco. Bo, don't feel bad about that pronunciation. For years, many of us in Portland would continually call the company uh, Triborg and Freyer, hey. uh, including myself. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's pretty That's pretty great. So, uh, yeah, man, Doug, uh, you know, obviously a historic brand. We had fun kind of unpacking um you know, the, the, the history of, uh, you know, their tobaccos last week. And, um, and he's got, he's got firsthand experience. Dude, there. Doug is a wealth of information and always. So yeah. I lo love when he love when he writes in, it's Absolutely. really, really great dude. Um, that is some, um, some, some listener feedback ish to spring on you. Oh, all right. To tonight. Uh, even though it, I, I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but do you remember, do you remember, when we had our custom cob competition, I do remember when we had our custom cob competition. Okay, so, so you know, one of the most we had several incredible, uh, you know, submissions to that. But one, one of the one of the most uh, impressive ones, I, I think, anyway, was the um, was the uh, was the custom cob that had a uh, a manger scene. Yeah, gorgeous. depicted on it. Like and it the was intricacies in, of it were. Like... It was incredibly intricate, and you could look. I mean, you could see in the manger scene the, uh, you know, the 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 little individual hairs on the on the you know magi's beard and things like that. It was really really impressive. So um, that was done by Liz White. She's mm -hmm. from Longview, Texas. She's uh, married to uh, to Josh, which is one of our very good friends. Actually, made a, a pilgrimage and um, uh, just good good guys. There's a lot of a lot of good folks over there in Longview, but. So Liz did that. And, and, you know, we liked that pipe so much that Nina and I, uh, my, my now wife and I, we, uh, you know, we commissioned her to do 
a pipe, of course, for our wedding cake, right? And yeah, so we, right. we had uh, the topper on our wedding cake. We had two corn cob pipes. One was a, a, a one that was like a the bride pipe, so it was a wedding dress, and then the other one was a uh, a tuxedo pipe. So it's the it's the groom it's the groom pipe, right? But, so that was both fun. Of which can be seen on our Facebook and Twitter, if I'm not mistaken. No, yeah, that's that's right. That's right. So so um you know c- come to find out that you know we've gone down the road a little bit. I keep up with Josh and and Liz. They're they're great people and a lot of fun and. Um, and, and so they wanted to do something special for you and me. All right. All of a sudden, I'm remembering certain conversations we've had in the past and pieces are starting to come together. They, they want to do something <laughs> special for you and me. Uh-huh. Uh, just, you know, just just because they like us. And, and that's and that's great. And they, you know, haven't sobered up yet, but but they still <laughs> but they still like us. Right, and, right, right. and and her talent is, is you know, prolific. And uh, she, she's really good. So she made us a couple of custom Dude! corn cob pipes. Dude! Are you and uh and, and so mine is a uh oh, eric of course it is. is a eric <laughs> cartman uh south park custom <laughs> corn cob pipe it's a missouri meersham uh, uh diplomat and, it, and it's got yeah. of course uh eric cartman standing there at the bus stop uh <laughs> you know it, it's got cheesy <laughs> poofs on the poofs side there's the mi- side. there's mr kitty he's at the bus stop it's it's got the little rocket on the cheesy poofs box i mean it's it's exquisite yeah i mean like and this looks like it, I mean, it is it is incredibly well done and and, and cartman his 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 fat little pudding pop self is just as perfect as he could be. And I'm wondering as I smoke this pipe, cause, cause she, they said these pipes are meant to be smoked. They want us to smoke them. Okay, good. Th- yeah. These are not, these are not display pieces. These are to be smoked. I- I'm wondering if I'll get more offensive as I smoke this pipe. Kind of, kind of Archie bunk, uh, Ar- Ar- Archie bunker, like, you know, right. Right. Right, that, right. Yeah. So, um, and, and then, and then of Careful course, with that pipe, then. Uh, no, I know, uh, your pipe, uh, it is a Spider Man. Oh, Spider Man! And uh, and, and oh is my gosh. isn't it gorgeous? What? I mean, like Dude. it it is out of control. She had the whole like fade on the sim and it everything. Is, That's it is insane. It is out of control. And, Look, tamp dad ash. and and of course, Spider Man <laughs> is screaming "Tamp that ash" while 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 holding a pipe. Hang on, let's um, see if I can get this on the camera. And uh, and and he is uh he he is just as as beautiful as he can be. And so, uh, anyway, j- yes, yeah, we swivel that around so they can see it. Yeah. Oh I mean, it, it gosh, is, that's awesome. It's awesome, man. And so Liz, uh, Liz did these for us. It's really kind. And, uh, <laughs> man, these are, these are, <laughs> these are Missouri American pipes have been bedazzled and we're, uh, we're thrilled to have them. So, um, anyway, yeah. So, that that, so that's, that's for you. We, I, I wanted, Guys, to, thank I wanted to give so that to much. you while we were on air, you know, it's kind of, kind of fun. Yeah. Oh, this is, this is so amazing. But, yeah. The I mean, time she put, the time she put into each one of these pipes is, absurd like it, it, it's absurd so she um she worked really hard like, we're we're really thankful for him. thought bubble and everything like he's holding a little pipe i, that's, I, I that's love that's spider-man holding a pipe that needs to be a thing like Dude. we need to uh, we need to make that happen gosh that's that's incredible <laughs> that is absolutely incredible <laughs> well if they would ever actually like like pick a lane with spider-man they keep on like rewriting his story five times over but that's a whole nother oh, <laughs> that's no, another yeah, no, right yeah oh, that's it <laughs> oh my goodness i love it thank y'all so much this yeah. is this is absolutely incredible really cool really cool yep awesome well, hey, uh, guys, if uh, if you've never tuned in for a live show, this is the kind of, uh, you know, this is the, the, this is the great unscripted stuff that you get from the live show. You know, unless like the rest of the show, which is totally scripted. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of it. I mean, you know, there's we you got notes. We got we got show notes. Notes. It's just professional. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, but hey, uh, we'd love for you to tune in for a live show. Of course, join us at Country Squire Radio on Monday nights for the live show at 830 830- uh, that's 8.30 p.m. CST, which also translates to a lot of other time zones. If I can pull up the screen correctly. Sorry, Mike. That's 8.30 p.m. CST. Of course, that's 6.30 Pacific, 9.30 Eastern. Of course, that can be found at Country Square Radio. You can follow us throughout the week. I'm at the Real Bo York. I'm at John David Cole, or you can get us at the shop at, at underscore Country Squire. And of course, the, uh, the show's Twitter handle is at Squire Radio, where we don't block anybody, Pappy. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't block you all right that's a whole other thing i probably shouldn't even mention as funny that, as, as funny oh, no we man. do we will never block pappy that oh, would be no. that would be sacrilege with his permission yeah. though i might want to mention that at the top of the next show because that was just so right. funny <laughs> uh all right but yeah no uh follow us on twitter at squire radio is the show all that information and more can be found at country squire radio.com man we had fun tonight, man. Yeah. Fire cured tobacco and freaking nerdy. gin tonic and man, pipe sale and custom cobs and MacArthur's and hey, you finished your gin and tonic. That's 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 great. And you, did. and you or did you spill it? Is that no, what happened? I okay. Never it. No, good. Well, that's, so. that's good. Well, the night's young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Well, let's go have a night. See you, brother. All right, guys. Thank y'all so much. Yeah, it's always good to see y'all, man. Thanks for tuning in and 
Uh, we appreciate you <laughs> a bunch, obviously. And uh, man, Josh and Liz, if y'all are watching, seriously, thanks so much for these pipes. Yeah, they are, absolutely. They are so cool, man. Josh, it was good to see you this weekend. Uh, he actually, I think del- Josh mentioned he tweeted in earlier, if I'm not mistaken. He actually, de- he actually delivered these uh, by hand. Uh, he he Dude. came he drove over this weekend, but it was you know it was a secret, and uh, he's making some humidors now, which is really cool. He's making humidors out of uh, out of old am- ammunition boxes, oh, wow. uh, which they're just stunning. We've got one here at the shop for sale, so um, and I'm sure he would love to commission you one too Ooh. if uh, if anyone's interested. Man, so, that's incredible. Um, anyway, yeah, really cool. We appreciate y'all and uh, to all our friends and family out there. Thanks for thanks for tuning in. Absolutely, guys. Yeah. Have a good night. Yeah, this is where I normally say good night. I press the button, but I didn't prep it. So, bye. Bye. <laughs>